I'm Craig Jones from The Wave Clock. You might have seen me from some of our past videos. And here with uh, Martin Stippout of uh, Ventana Surfboard and Supplies. And we're here in Martin's shop. Hello, everybody. Martin works a lot of the magic of the boards that we've seen from uh, Ventana. Some of the wave clocks that we've talked about that Martin's done some incredible work on as well. Uh, but also going to talk about some of the other awards that have gone on. But I figured first we'd start off and I'll let Martin kind of introduce himself and give a little overview of what you do here in the shop at Ventana. Excellent. Well, as Craig said, my name is Martin Stippout. Um, I'm the woodworker slash craftsman for Ventana Surfboards and Supplies. Um, I basically build surf craft and accessories out of reclaimed wood from various different sources. Uh, mainly the biggest attraction, of course, are the surfboards. Um, but from there, I also use smaller scraps and build hand planes and other small surf accessories, which I could definitely go into. Awesome. Thanks. Sure. You know, Martin, since I think we're talking to a lot of surfers more than anything, um, you know, it, it's always blown me away what you've been able to do, number one, from the woodworking perspective for boards. Uh, but number two, where you get a lot of the wood from and how you're really focused, that you guys are really focused on making sustainable, uh, sustainably sourced surfboards and all the other accessories you've talked about. So, you know, first, maybe give us a little story on kind of where you get a lot of your wood from and and, and really the, the, the amazing stories behind some of the sources yeah. of wood. Um, <clears throat> so lots of different sources of wood. Uh, most of it, uh, actually all of it is donated. We've always said that we'll, we won't purchase wood. We'd like to intercept it between, you know, the, the consumer and the dump itself. Mm -hmm. um, so we only take from the waste stream. There's a couple partnerships that we have with local businesses around town, um, woodworking businesses where I go once a week or once a month and pick up all of their scraps. Mm -hmm. um, one of them being Santa Cruz Guitar Company, which is where I get a lot of my exotic woods, which otherwise would go to the landfill and I really wouldn't have any access to. So it gives me a good opportunity to use woods that I otherwise wouldn't come in contact with, as well as reducing everybody's waste stream. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the local woods, um, construction projects, quite a good source for that. You know, all the, the old houses here in Santa Cruz were built of true two by four redwood. Um, recently, I got a bunch of wood from a house on Second Street above the boardwalk. It was built in 1888. Oh, wow. Um, and it's just, it's gorgeous redwood with lots of nail holes, but it makes it kind of interesting built out of just two of those two by four um, a few yeah. weeks ago and let's see i just recently picked up a redwood hot tub that was for free on the internet <laughs> that's <laughs> nice. been pretty interesting to get into um, we have some absolutely amazing wood that my business partner david dennis sourced uh, we have some ship uh, some hull planks from the western flyer which is the boat that john steinbeck took through the sea of cortez in the 40s oh yeah um, upon which he wrote his novel you know log of the sea of cortez so great that's book. Really, yeah, it's a great <laughs> book. It's really interesting wood, and it, it definitely has a story to tell on its own. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, from Santa Cruz Guitar Company, Richard Hoover is just, he's an amazing guy. And the wood we get from them ranges from bits of 8,000 year old oak to, um, you know, lots of little ebony scraps that aren't usable for them to just the most intricate little detailed pieces. Mm -hmm. um, so again, that's really fun to work with. And then we also just have people that have a fence that comes down and I'll go grab it, you know, wood yeah. that's maybe doesn't have this huge story, but still needs to home and, and shouldn't be going to the landfill. Yeah. Um, oh, that's great. So it's quite nice. And one of the big treasure um, hunts, I guess, with this wood is a lot of times you pick up really trashy wood and really wood that looks like it's had its day and it's used and, you know, the dump is the right place and you cut into it and it's just. Mm -hmm. um, which is actually what I thought of the, the Western Flyer, the boat hull boards. Oh, yeah. They look like <laughs> there was nothing salvageable, and it's it's one of the most interesting pieces of wood I've ever seen. Oh, wow. So quite neat. Um, yeah. Got a, yeah, it'd be great to take a look at a few of those pieces. <laughs> so this is the Redwood hot tub I was talking about. Um, this was the bottom. This is where the bottom of the, uh, the hot tub actually fit into. But okay. they're all these really nice planks. You know, they're a little shorter, so it limits me on what I can do. But as mm -hmm. long as you get creative with it. And it's completely clear grain redwood, old growth redwood. And there's not a knot in it. Oh, yeah. So uh, you can see a little bit of the staining. I'm assuming that was the outside. So a little weathering on the outside, yeah. but and a little bit of staining from the water. And uh, we were talking about smells <laughs> from wood earlier. So you're saying you can kind of 
smell a little bit. Like, oh, actually, you can smell the chlorine in yeah. that. Huh? Once you start sanding and cutting into it, the chlorine gets gets pretty fresh. But yeah, that middle is just absolutely perfect. Huh? Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. So I don't think bugs will ever get into this one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> termite resistant. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> there's a few things in Santa Cruz. It's termite resistant. Absolutely. So I get really curious about this stuff. I just picked it up a week and a half or so ago, um, mm -hmm. and I immediately had to cut into it and build my first board with it. Yeah. So I mean, getting into the boards, make sure everyone can see there. A week and a half. So you put that together in a week and a half. Yeah, I hustled. <laughs> so. And, so a uh, small six six and little fish tail swallow with or swallow tail with little wings on the side there um and because the redwood boards were so short i had to go diagonal with it which you know, actually turned out looking really cool on this board i think um oh, and you can see how dark the staining is and these were the inside boards that were closest to the water mm -hmm. um, and then these were the next cuts off of those planks so the further in you go the more redwood it looks how thin are you planing those down? Like how thick are they? Um, I started about three sixteenths, and then they get sanded, so I'm sure they end up at around an eighth inch. Gotcha. Finished. Oh, that deck is gorgeous. Actually, I turned around when I walked in, so I hadn't seen the deck yet, but that's almost translucent on its own. Just like yeah. That. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Wow. So that's a pretty fun board. It doesn't have a home yet. This is just kind of a spec board that I'm building. Oh, nice. So, and that's, twins. is that a new shade for you too? It's not, it's actually one of my oldest. Okay. Um, I think it's my seventh or eighth shade that I designed. Um, but it was always a single fin. I've always made it a single fin. And then recently I had one that had some fin issues. So I chopped the fin off and put twin fins on it. Yeah. <laughs> it turned out amazing. So from here on, I think they're going to be twins. Made it work. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and then I mean, to look kind of further along the, the process, one of your almost finished products there, uh, this guy that you brought out setting up, I mean, with the, I mean, that board's beautiful. I love the, the rising sun on it. Yeah, so this one just needs a couple polish coats. It still has tape on it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's pretty incredible. 6'6". Thrust, or sorry, six, six one thruster, um, rising sun on the bottom. It's pretty much all redwood on the bottom, except for the small sun. Um, the sun is dug fur from the Western Flyer. Oh, so wow. that's diesel water so it's got oil that stain. staining in it from the oh, very cool. Exactly. All the sun rays are old growth redwood from the house on Second Street. Oh, wow. The Victorian mansion. So these are quarter sawn pieces, and then these rays are flat sawn uh, these pieces. These are the nail holes you're talking about. Exactly. So the nail holes I backfill with brass, which makes it look pretty interesting. I was about to say, I remember you telling me in the past that you've used brass on the, the backfill stuff. Yeah. And then curly redwood down here, which, you know, the more you move it. Oh, um, man. It looks like water. <laughs> That's awesome. And then the winds, too, with the burl on them. The, the fins? fins? Yeah. <laughs> Those are pretty Excuse incredible, resin too. Drops. Seas. This was a piece of redwood burl that I picked up at the beach after one of our storms in, uh, I think it was in January that I grabbed it. And it was quite dry already once I sliced into it and then let it dry for a while. These fins are pretty amazing. Oh, those are. I I mean, to me, I was thinking um, like almost Hawaiian koa that has that, that neat burling in it when I first saw them. But... Yeah, it's kind of got that flame luster to it. And so I've never seen redwood burl that's come out like it's pretty incredible stuff. Nice. And then the top, excuse the tape again, that same redwood. This was just one two by four. You can see all the nail holes match up across the board. Oh, yeah. Um, so I got lots of slices out of an actual two inch piece of redwood. And these strips are mahogany from Santa Cruz Guitar Company. Oh, wow. So backs and sides and necks are Honduras mahogany. And then also from the guitar company is spruce and Indian rosewood. Interesting. So it makes a real nice checkerboard. And so the spruce and rosewood they're using on the, the inlays on the neck. Well, uh, soundboard, for, and, soundboard and, on oh, the spruce. Soundboard. Okay. And back and sides with uh, the rosewood. Ah. And the nose has a little abalone inlay. Oh, wow. And then also the Western flyer wood. Oh, very cool. This board's going to 
had to have a house in Hawaii. Oh, someone's already picked it up, huh? Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> going, gone. Awesome. <laughs> um, well, and then, uh, you know, further, you were showing you earlier, you picked up one of the redwood fins you had made. And this thing, I mean, this is lighter than uh, any glass fin that, that I've ever used. I mean, it, uh, I'm, I was shocked at how light this is. Yeah. I would have expected the redwood just being a denser, a little bit heavier wood to be, but no, I mean, it's almost, it's like balsa. Yeah. Wise. Yeah. It's, it's definitely on the really light spectrum of, of all the different woods. Um, mm -hmm. but there is variance within boards. You know, there's a couple of those hot tub boards that I picked up that were significantly heavier. Yeah. Uh, I think it just depends on the tree. Oh yeah. Um, um one of the other things that, that you guys have done are the hand planes, which are pretty interesting. And I've actually never used a hand plane. I mean, you know, growing up was always bodyboards and body surfing, but uh, the hand plane's a cool concept, number one. And I know they've been around for a long time, but what you're doing with them is pretty incredible. Yeah, so they have been around for quite a while. It's probably actually the earliest form of surfing before they decided to stand up on things. Oh, wow. I don't know. That's my theory. So. Seems legit. <laughs> yeah. So hand planes are used for body surfing. You just wear one on your leading hand, a pair of flippers on them, and you can kick in the waves. It gives you more planing speed. Uh, you can actually get both hands on it and get your whole upper body out of the water. Mm -hmm. And it's it's really nice on turning. I put quite a deep double concave in the back of them with really hard rails, so it, it really helps oh, in turning. Um, let's see if you guys can see that. Oh yeah. This one is for a customer. It's a nice little redwood tree. <laughs> the redwood came from his house, which is in Live Oak. It was built in the 40s or 50s, and he was remodeling. And the exterior siding was just really nice, clear grain redwood. Um, and unfortunately, most of it was chopped into small pieces, but obviously, I managed to salvage the little ones and make use of it. Um, the back is yellow Alaskan cedar. Mm -hmm. Those are benches at Monterey Bay Aquarium. Oh, so wow. If more than two years ago you sat on one of the benches, could be going surfing now. <laughs> <laughs> the dark strips are Indian rosewood from Santa Cruz Guitar Company again. Oh, very cool. Which and, adds a beautiful contrast in there. Yeah. I use all brass hardware in them so you can replace a strap if you need to replace a strap. You mm -hmm. have adjustable buckles on the inside. Um, the nylon webbing I get recycled or I have a giant back stock recycled or reclaimed from a, uh, a seamstress that went out of business. Mm -hmm. And this was kind of in the garbage pile. And the neoprene we get from O'Neill, when they do new wetsuit development, they always have sample sheets and they'll look at uh, them and decide what they do. And then they have all these samples. So I gather those up and that's how. I... Which would normally end up in the trash. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, so another fantastic. good good use of it to make the straps. Oh, absolutely. Um, and when we sell them, we always put them in a double thick towel bag. <laughs> Perfect. The towels are leave behinds at the beach. So in the evenings, if I'm at the beach and I found a dirty wet towel or whatnot, take it home, wash it, turn them into hand playing bags. Oh, nice. And the cords are paracord, and that's offcuts from a company, a local company as well, Cords Mugs. That made... Oh, yeah. I think I've met him at some of the events, the guy who makes yeah. The mugs. Yeah. So we get it as offcuts from their mugs. Well, and doesn't he get uh, excess cord from somewhere else as well? So it's almost like twice recycled. I, I vaguely remember him telling me he gets surplus cord from somewhere. You could be right. I'm not 100%. Yeah, I'm, and I might be making stuff up. <laughs> could be. <laughs> it happens. Yeah, so we really try to use a lot of different companies' trash. And the smaller things get, the smaller the trash gets, obviously, the smaller products we make. Mm -hmm. But another pretty cool one are these Save a Surf boxes. Um, oh, so it's an original design of ours. It's made out of four companies trash. Sorry, I had to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> so the main purpose, it holds your wax so it doesn't melt into the back of your car while you're out surfing or while it's in the hot car. Um, so it's a wax box, also a comb and a scraper. Clean off the wax and rough up your wax. It's got a little key tag on there. This is an offcut from the cords mugs again. Oh, all right. Um, and that's an extra leash cord for your board. Bottle opener ring, because you always have to have one of those with you. After a surf. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, the mahogany sides are all mahogany necks from Santa Cruz Guitar Company. The front and back of this one are ash from a cabinet shop that went out of business. Ah. In the front here are different screws, Futures, FCS, and longboard fin screws. And there's also a plate for the longboard fin in there. So 
Oh, if you ever wow. need one of those on a surf session, you should have it with you. Yeah, it's something you can't replace off the beach. Exactly. <laughs> uh, we include, include a double sized bar of wax. Uh, so we figure uh, if it's double size, you end up with little, little nutty pieces that you can't use. Uh, um, it's 100% organic. It's made in small batches over wood fired stoves in New York, fueled by the offcuts from the gentleman's dad's cabinet shop. Holy cow. So again, it's a huge mouthful, but one more story that goes along with the wax boxes. That's outstanding. Um, on the inside of the cone is the Allen wrench with a couple of magnets, and that runs all the different keys. Mm -hmm. You can also set it in here on the magnet and line it up to the 37 degrees. That's on the back. We'll approximate. And you get yourself a sundial. Outstanding. So <laughs> another good piece of use. And last but not least, we also include a guitar pick since we do get so much trash from the guitar company. And these we punch out of used key cards from the Dream In. Oh, wow. Oh, that's great. Oh. So, uh, yeah, and I thought the sundial was one of the cleverest things in there as well. Well, and the ring bottle opener. Well, <laughs> and the, the wax and the recycled wood all around. <laughs> Yeah, so nice handy little boxes. Um, so the Save a Surf boxes are also on the Kickstarter awards. So that those are at um, um, a level in there. We're going to do some Wave Clock Special Editions with Ventana on the Kickstarter awards of the Save a Surf box. So uh, I can get in on, on some special edition Save a Surf boxes there. Um, you know, I keep looking behind you because I thought when I first came to your shop, this was one of the coolest things. And being a guitar player, you know, you don't you don't consider where all your guitar parts come from all the time, but yeah, this is an example of, I guess, one of the neck off cuts from Santa Cruz guitar company. Um, so I, it's just, it's great because if you think you're making such a complex piece of hardware out of wood, there's going to be a lot of waste wood. And to me, it's just, it was a neat story that you guys were really able to, to dial into that chain of waste wood. That's very high quality wood yeah. that probably used to just end up in, I mean, landfills, I would guess, not even used for, for any type of good purpose. Yeah. Um, so it's fantastic that I think you guys are really paved the way to, to move forward with, with some sustainably sourced, uh, goods out of everything. Yeah. We try to do our best, you know, there's. There's so much cool stuff available out there and a lot of times it just takes time and, and a little bit of resources, but there's mm -hmm. no point in really wasting it. Um, you know, there were so many small bits of just exotic woods that was, I was not able to find a use for for a while. And finally, my girlfriend and I started making jewelry together as well. So ah. I'll grab it and show you. Yeah, please. <laughs> And it was just sad to see such little bits of cocobolo and koa and different exotic oh, hardwoods wow. going in the trash. So we figured we'd spend our evenings and make a whole bunch of jewelry. Oh, those are beautiful. Wow, that's a great pendant there, is it? Yeah. How did you do the uh, design at the bottom there? So that's the original purfling that they had in the, it's usually the back strap. In mm -hmm. the back of the guitar, they have a nice decorative strap that oh, runs down the seam. Yeah. So okay. this was one of the back off cuts that they usually have about an inch or two extra. Mm -hmm. and, and there's nothing they could do with it. No, and there's not really anything mm -hmm. I can do with it because it's all end grain. Mm -hmm. The grain's running the wrong way, but it's... It makes a perfect pendant. Yes. Oh, very cool. Yes. And do you guys have those on the Ventana website? I believe we do have them on the website. Cool. And I've definitely seen the display at... Uh, at the different events that you guys show up to locally for sure. Yeah. It's been traveling with us now, <laughs> which I am going to push the, uh, June 24th. We have the, uh, pleasure point street fair coming up in pleasure point, which I know Ventana will be there with a couple of booth spaces. We'll be there with a the wave clock as well. Yep. Um, we'll likely be neighbors as we, we often are at these events. Um, much time I'm going to start, I'm going to end us with one final question here. How did sure. you get into woodworking and, and really get into this being your, your art and passion? Um, I guess I've been into woodworking as long as I could hold a tool. I remember, I think at three years old, I got my first whittling knife. Oh, wow. and I just always whittled and, and messed around with little things. I didn't start building surfboards until about 2010. 
and that was out of necessity. Mm -hmm. um, I had foam boards, never really considered making my own board until my foam board broke and I didn't want to fix it or buy any more. Mm -hmm. um, so that's when I started doing the, the surfboards. But I guess I've been doing it all my life and it's just become my favorite thing. Mm -hmm. um, I went to school as a for marine biology with emphasis in marine mammals. Oh, wow. And I worked on a boat for a while and did marine research and education, most of which ended up coming back to trash. Mm -hmm. um, we did a lot of project projects of actually track uh, mapping and collecting trash in Monterey Bay as well as San Francisco Bay, uh -huh. trying to come up with theories of where it's coming from and how we can you know, get mm -hmm. rid of some of it. Um, mm -hmm. And we also did a big uh, push down the coast of California to enable the, the plastic band bag to go through. Oh, wow. So right when it was beginning, we did went and, and spoke with a lot of different counties mm -hmm. um, and tried to get them to push that. So that kind of instilled that sense of recycling, reclaiming, um, and really watching what we do as far as trash, mm -hmm. you know, watching what comes up on the back end. So it's kind of nice to be able to build a business out of trash that way. And that's really Absolutely. become my favorite thing to do now. Uh, and yeah, finding a responsible use for it. Absolutely. I, we're, we're totally getting there, I think, as a society in the U.S. And, you know, it's ironic. I'll, we'll be out doing sampling in different systems for um, looking for relic environmental contaminants back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. But the thing you see in a lot of urban waterways is the amount of trash in there is just absolutely mind-boggling over what we're sampling in the sediments deep for the town. Now, granted, the critters live in those sediments, so that is a, a genuine source of harm as well. But yeah, um, yeah it's it's interesting to, uh, to to see what we're still putting into waterways. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks very much, Martine. Uh